Morning folks. It is a warm day here on the homestead. Uh, got everybody fed, all the usual daily chores. And things have slowed down for us quite a bit. Uh, we don't have really any new new projects that we're working on off the homestead. So it's enabling me to get some projects done here on the homestead. So today I'm fencing. Uh, we are going to be fencing our west boundary uh, that we cut out. You guys seen on the last um, vlog I did. And as you can see, uh, it takes a little bit to get everything kind of loaded up to get ready to go work. Uh, it's not like you can just go and the tools are there and you can just pick up where you left off last time. You got to gather everything up. Well, some's one place, some's another. You know how that goes. So I'm going to go up here and tie off uh, uh, the bob wire. And we're going to run down here to the horse pen. And hopefully uh, I'll get the brace in, uh, bring the T-posts up here, get them all drove and we should be ready to run the rest of the wire uh, at least the barbed wire part of the of the uh, project uh, even on the back fence uh which by the way you guys ain't seen let me take you back here and show you so we've got five strands of barbed wire down the south perimeter of our place um you guys remember this post here that broke um now I know in the past you've heard me say, and if you hadn't, you hadn't been watching the vlog that long. I hate barbed wire. I hate it with passion. I hate using it, but it's what we got. And with the cost of materials and the cost of everything going up, we're going to use what we got. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to put a strand of high tensile, uh, which is going to be electric, between each strand and one right on the bottom. And that's going to take and keep the the sheep off of it uh, and hopefully keep some of the predators out. So that's our plan. Um, this five strands will keep the cows out for now. Um, and once we get it all up, we can actually turn the horses out and let them graze a little bit every once in a while. Um, I don't want to kill all the pasture. I want to save it for the sheep. Uh, sheep do really good on native grasses and we've got quite a bit of grass. It's just one of those things where uh, we're having to do what we can when we can um, and it's it's a it's not an ideal situation if if everything was ideal i would have just exactly what i wanted i wouldn't even be using t-posts i wouldn't be using wood posts i'd be using timeless uh, the world's not ideal so i think that's a number one killer of of homesteads the number one killer of relationships and probably the number one killer of of any uh endeavor is preconceived ideas there's things i like there's things i would want to do and there's things that i would suggest if you have the money but when it comes right down to brass tacks uh i gotta do with what i got and this is what i got so i'm gonna get started and uh get this uh first strand of bob wire up so i can get my brace set and i'm gonna take you guys along for it hopefully by the end of this vlog we got a fence up okay i'm gonna take and show you uh two different ways to tie bob wire um a lot of people just go around they'll just take and they'll go around like so and they will just do a a simple twisting pattern kind of like what i got on some of these others and when you stretch your fence this is going to tighten up and i don't care how many wraps you put on it uh they are going to slip somewhat and over the years if they take any impacts or anything like that they're really going to loosen up um the one that i use probably the most is a double wrap and i'm wrapping here around some already wrapped bob wire so this is one wrap i will wrap again 
so that I have two wraps. And generally, I will, of course, go ahead and twist that on uh, around and make some make some twists. Generally, that's the one I use the most, and then I'll just compress the the strands and put a staple in it to hold. Um, if you're on pipe or on a surface that you can't attach to readily, um, this tie right here is probably the best. You can do the double wrap. Dealing with bob wire here, so you have to stick with me. The double wrap works also, but this one works probably better than any of them. Make sure my My position of my bob wire is right and I will go around once here so I've put my bob wire down I'm going to go back around my post I'm going to suture that up real good there and then I'm going to come in front of that and twist my wire this is the one I'm going to leave on there just to show you guys. So that's a pretty good twist. I like this one, uh, particularly for pipe and that sort of thing. So um, I'll go back and I'll show you again uh, how I did that. And maybe it'll help you out. I'll probably go ahead and put a staple in that just to take and uh, keep it in place before I stretch it because I'm gonna be stretching on the other end. But that's the three ways that people generally tie bob wire and the double wrap is pretty good. This one here is even better. Made it down here to the course corral, course pin. And I really like this fence stretcher. Uh, a lot of folks have them. This is a really nice one. Um, I try to get as much slack out of my bob wire as possible. And I'm gonna cut me enough to go all the way around and tie. Supposed to be oh man I got shocked that's pretty stout <laughs> mm. you don't want to touch that it does hurt mm. so I'm gonna go in this hole right here man that hurt <sighs> let you know the electric fence is working So what I do when I'm doing barbed wire to timeless, and I'm just tying off, generally I will take off about three or four barbs. My hands, actually after I get shocked, don't want to play. <laughs> You'll this particular wire has the barbs all on one strand, so that's pretty nice. 
uh, some of the cheaper brand wires like the um, the high tensile wire has the barbs over both of them and you kind of got to untwist them off of everything so I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five depending on the length here because I really want to be able to do a tie this bulb wire likes to twist back up so what I'll do here is take and kind of untwist it a little bit and twist it off I'll hold one side of the barb and twist it with the pliers okay so I'm going in this one here so now I've got to put my stretcher on I generally put it just under where I'm going to tie and I go a little bit past where I can hook it easily it hooks me easily So now we got to go back up the line and make sure we're not hung up anywhere. I don't know if you can see it in distance, you can see it's not straight. So we'll go up through here snapping the line and making sure that it's in a straight line. The more deviations you have from the line, the more slack it has. I can actually tie it off back there and restretch it if I need to. So right here, we'll just pick it up and just like snapping a chalk line, you get a straighter line. We'll go check the rest of it. Right up here, you can see it's kind of hung on the stump. We cut out that tree. And it usually happens over top of hills. I'll just snap it. And it's fairly tight. So that's how you know when and where your uh, fence is. And it'll deceive you because I thought this tree was actually in the way of the fence line. But when we stretch the wire, it's not even on the fence line. I was thinking I would really need to staple to this, but upon further examination and snapping this line, no such reality. It's not even on the line. And this, it, it'll, it'll fool you when you're clearing out fence line, you'll cut down stuff you really don't need to, and at least we got a good clear path. So I'm gonna go down through here, snap this bottom one more time, and we'll tie it off. I'm gonna do a more of a high tensile tie. I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna go over. I'm going to come back through. I need my pliers for this. Kind of help it. I'm going to 
will go over top. And then around. Now that'll hold when I loosen this up. Tighten right up there. And I'll just twist this up. There you have it. We got our wire up. Now we can go dig our brace post. Uh, even as much rain as we've had, the uh, ground's pretty hard. So I poured some water in there to let it soak. I'm going to go down and prep the uh, post. Or I may bring it up here. Probably bring it up here and prep it. Be closer. And uh, wait for that ground to soften up a little bit. So as I'm getting ready here to... Uh, prepare my post Miss Polly's gonna put out flags she puts a flag out everywhere that we put a t-post and she walks it off she's measured it with her feet and she'll mark it we're putting these posts every 12 feet uh, we wanted it a little bit tighter than what we normally would do we normally would set a post every 15 feet we wanted 12 uh, it is going to be, like I said before, electric in between each one of these bulb wires. But the smaller your place is, uh, the more high impact it is. You need to put your posts tighter together and you want to have more strands. So about two foot of this is going to be in the ground. And what we do is we save all of our used molar oil, hydraulic oil, uh, anything that mineral oil, whatever we got, and we'll put a coating of that. Even though these are treated posts, we want to stay off termites, uh, wood-eating ants, that sort of thing. So I really want that to soak into the post. This has got a little bit of everything in it. Uh, we have any old fuel, we'll stick that in there, different kinds of fuel. I put chainsaw, old chainsaw gas in it. Whatever it takes to make it more pliable. All right, got our our hole two foot deep. I just gotta take and measure up 42 inches and set my post in the hole. I dig it just a little bit longer than what I need. Five feet, which is like right there, is where I'll set the post to mark it. 
And then when I attach it, I'll put concrete over here in front of it. And what that concrete does, it creates a block around the post and a kind of a stop, kind of like a door stop. Uh, when we're pulling on the post this way, that post is not only pushing into the uh, sand, into the ground, it's also pushing into that concrete, which makes it harder for it to move and put strain on. The other thing we do is we pitch all of our posts out 15 degrees so that if there is movement, um, they won't take and uh, go past plumb. Uh, if you're 15 degrees out and you put a lot of pressure on it, it can come to plumb generally and you'll be okay. Uh, most time we don't put that much pressure on, on any post. So I gotta go get the concrete and a Sharpie and we'll get this post in the ground. Alrighty folks, got this brace in. I'm not gonna put the tension wire on it until this concrete sets up. I've got concrete under it, in front of it, all around it. And I've been told <laughs> by some viewers, that's not how you mix concrete. Well, we've been doing it that way 20 years and it works. We just pour the dry in, pour the water on top of it, We'll mix it a little bit with spud bar, open it up so water can get down in it, and then it'll cure. Uh, the thing about concrete, everybody thinks it's a uh, wet-dry reaction, when it actually it's a chemical reaction, uh, and as it cures, it, it hardens up. It's not that when it dries, it cures up. So I guess the two are uh, happens simultaneously, but anyway, I gotta load all the stuff up. Go find Miss Polly. I think she's marking T posts. Uh, we mark them all at 16 inches. And we like to leave about three notches up. So from here to the ground is uh, 52, and we leave a little bit. Uh, so she's marking at 16 inches. We drive them all 16 inches. Some of those up there you'll see in another video. Um, were a little bit longer they were like 20 inches those were six and a half footers so had to drive them a little bit uh, farther down the ground which is fine i used some of them in some low spots worked out real good so now get all this loaded all righty miss polly marked all these looks like her marker puked a little bit <laughs> We went and had something to eat, and it's been about two hours, and this is what it's doing now. It may rain on me, but I'm gonna go see how many uh, T-posts I can drive without getting lit, lit by str struck by lightning, lit by strucking or something like that. <laughs> all right, I got all the posts laid out. My uh, battery was dying on my camera. Had charged it up, so I went ahead and laid these posts out. I'm gonna start up here and get them all drove all the way down to the sheep, uh, uh, sheep horse, all the way down to the horse pen, and hopefully we uh, don't get rained on right this second. Maybe it'll hold off. 
I sure do love this country though, cause it can be 100 degrees one minute and 60 the next. These clouds roll in, these fronts roll in. Now is it beautiful? Sure does cool things off. Got all my posts drove. Whew. Pretty nice looking fence line. Miss Polly will have to come through like she always does and level them up. We are fenced on the west side to the horse pen. Now on the other side, going out the other day where we uh, set that post out there in the anthill. We're gonna run just high tinsel, no barbed wire in the front. And we're gonna use timeless T-posts from here around. I think the front of the property will look a lot better um, that way. So all along the front, we're gonna use timeless and then uh, back down over the hill past the, uh, the workshop up on the hill, we're gonna use timeless. So just to make it look a little nicer, it's all gonna be high tinsel. We had toyed with the idea of using uh, some rope, some poly rope, but I don't, I don't think it'll work real good. I think it'll just get rotted out pretty, pretty quick with all the UV rays. Uh, it didn't rain on us, but it sure, sure did cool off. So I got this done. That was about 36 posts I drove there in. Let's see. Uh. about an hour's time so not too bad for an old man <laughs> i've got to feed everybody uh, i've got to do evening chores and i'm going to take and i'm going to get get it all done and get in the house and get some rest and we'll come back after it again tomorrow so i'm going to end it up right there i'll show you the finished product on another vlog and until next time remember be not weary and well doing for in due season you shall reap if you faint not, we'll see you later.